Purple flashes filled the sky as Alicorn after Alicorn of all colors appeared above, green bowls forming under some of them to give them a protected platform to attack from. I shrieked like a filly as a magical energy bolt uh, sizzled the pavement in front of me, running for the safety of the interior of the house. In my haste I had forgotten which side was open, and slammed through the uh, plate glass panes. I felt as the glass sliced through parts of my coat, the adrenaline cutting down the pain I felt as I tumbled across the floor. I had to get outside and find Maple. If he didn't have one of his power-armored rangers loading that cannon, then we couldn't clear the sky. No pony would survive the time required to lift the shells. I pulled myself to my hooves, pushing myself off as I felt a surge of strength when my body connected to the front door. The old door slammed down flat as I walked out into the street. Every pony was firing back from cover, be it shooting blindly or actually aiming. I felt something burn my hoof, causing me to pull it back for a moment before a bolt struck the ground. My tail was yanked, making me look and spin as another beam narrowly missed me. I felt stupid as I had just noted every pony was firing from cover while I was in the middle of the street. I scrambled back inside, mouthing around the bit of my saddle, spinning the gun up before peeking my head out. I spotted a platform floating just in my line of sight. The green unicorn casting the shield spell was sitting open and vulnerable. Feeling like I had the advantage, I pulled the primary trigger, immediately killing my ability to hear as my stream of fire flew up and didn't find its mark. My burst attracted the fire of the others around it, peppering the ground and walls with burn marks. I jumped back, and of uh, the wine in my ear dropping off just enough that I could hear heavy footsteps of power-armored ponies dashing across the street. Oh my! Oh my! Doppler shrieked as she made a beeline straight for the house, a few of the magical beams grazing her armor and leaving glowing red-hot streaks across it. She let out a final eep and dove through the doorway, nearly bowling into me. Just what I needed! I shouted as she got back up. Get over that gun and load it! But I'm trying to call for help! She squeaked and backed away from me, nearly walking back out of the doorway before another close shot made her jump back in. We won't need it if you load that gun! I growled out, stepping past her and taking aim for the same group I had just shot at before. Let's see. Skyline always had talked about distance, elevation. Aha! Compensate for wind, maybe? I bit down on both triggers, letting out another short burst, missing yet again and being answered with another bolt barrage. I watched as the bartender from earlier took a step out to cover uh, and fire, and was hit by a bolt. He dropped into the dirt, dead from his chest smoldering. I... I can't get out, go out there! The power-armored mare was deathly afraid, as we all were, but I could hear it in her voice. This was the first time she'd seen real combat. I know because I remember something uh, sounding just like that, while the old man uh, just told me that I needed to fight. I needed to win. Amongst all other things, I needed to survive. If you don't, we all die. And I, in particular, do not want to die tonight. I shouted over the gunfire around all of us. We have to make it. If we lose tonight, the wasteland loses. You're the only one here that can load the cannon fast enough. Just grab a shell, throw it in, and run back inside. Simple as that. I pat her on the back. You can do it! Now get loading! I turned back to the door, watching as uh, now the merc we had hired was stepping from cover, hoisting his machine gun up in his forehooves as he balanced on his hind legs and took aim at one of the platforms. Burn in hell, you motherfuckers! I could barely hear him over the symphony of fire as the rest of the settlement was letting loose, but he looked like he was laughing as he swept an arc of fire across the sky, his smile showing pure ecstasy as, to my amazement, his rounds punched through the shields uh, holding a few of the groups up, perforating three or four of the monstrosities. I bit down on my mouthpiece again, using the distraction he had provided as my chance to fire up at the same group I had been trying to hit. I had hoped I lined it up as they poured out. The blue alicorn on the platform immediately to the right of where I had been aiming fell off and plummeted to the ground. I got a kill! Not the one I was aiming for, but huzzah! The cannon out back fired off again, making me jump, and helped me to avoid getting fired at by another bolt. I stopped for just a moment, swelling my ear to listen for the telltale sign of the others. 
I could just barely make out the high-pitched whine of Skyline's Goss rifles among the reports. Happy to know that she was still alive. The side door burst open as Fruit Cup uh, was drugged down the office hallway by Searcher. He was screaming his head off from the fact that his right foreleg had been melted, and sat at nearly 90 degree angle from where it should have been. Backlash. The others need help. Out the door. He screamed over to me, disappearing into Lily's office. I galloped to the door immediately, taking aim at one of the groups, firing down at the ponies uh, hiding under a covering, covered eating area. The tin roof was glowing red and sagging heavily from the hits it had taken, while Skyline, Longbow, Lily, and Casserole were huddled with one of the guards from the gate. Something in my mind flared up, making my rage boil to the surface. No pony hurts my friends. No pony! I shouted from around the bit, pulling the trigger and feeling the gun clattering off. I carefully led the stream between groups in the sky, sparking uh, the rounds off the bright green shields as the alicorns ducked back to avoid losing their heads. The gun let out a swirl, a, a swift series of clicks to tell me it had run dry. My instincts pulling me back before dozens of shots started to shred the doorway. The report of the large cannon firing again was shortly followed by the smoldering chunks of at least one blue and green alicorn littering the streets outside. I turned and ran as fast as I could for the basement to get another can of ammo, hoofing out the spent can and replacing it, and getting back up the stairs in ten seconds flat. Our blue-coated Merc was doing fine as his shots dropped another alicorn's body into the streets, but his shack cover was looking about as tortured as the others. I was about to lay some covering fire down when Frosty bolted past me into the street, apparently recovering enough to join the fight. I swear to the goddesses, we were actually going to win this fight. Figuring that Frosty could help them, I turned and ran back to support Longbow and the others. As I got to the doorway, I noticed that the unicorn guard had summoned up his own shield, letting both Longbow and Casserole pick their shots before ducking back into cover. It was a smart tactic, but just as the power-armored pair ducked back under the cover, a pair of rebar spears shot through the air and skewered the uh, unicorn. As suddenly I decided that we were winning, the goddess struck back. As a rain of hurled debris fell upon us, shredding the cover that the others were hiding behind almost as fast as they could get away from it. My rage flared again as another skewer narrowly missed Longbow, my mind moving my body to act even before I could see what a bad idea it was. And as always, time seemed to crawl to a slow, a slow to a crawl. I galloped into the street, skidding to a stop in the middle as the others bolted out from the collapsing shacks. I took aim for the closest group of alicorns. The blue one in the group went uh, eyes wide when she saw me, the barrels on my gun spinning up and firing just as she raised her own shield. The round struck her spell with no effect, a smile spreading across her muzzle as she finally could settle things with me. The others ran past the, me for the door. Both Lily and Crasserole were making it in, with Skyline pushing at Longbow to keep moving. The stinging pain was one that I hadn't quite felt before, as a rebar rod punched through my foreleg, making me release the bit as I tried to scream. I found myself unable to, un, unable to, as an even worse sensation erupted in my flank. I turned my head to look back, seeing another of the rusted rods had been driven through the reinforced section of my barding. From the way it sat, I knew that it was bad, seeing as not many ponies walked away from injuries like this. Longbow screamed something as the blue alicorn I had shot dropped off of her perch, enveloping me in her shield and muffling the sounds around us as she walked up to me. A blue tinge added to the uh, blue as one of the green unicorns um, buffed her spell, making sure we were alone. I glanced down at my pit buck cursing that I still hadn't remembered to change the fuse over before things went to shit. The goddess caught uh, my not-so-subtle gaze and took my pit buck in her magic, twisting it hard enough that the bone in my leg snapped, letting it go as I no longer had the strength to stand up. Not wanting to die with a whimper, I hastily bit down on the bit, wanting to make sure she paid for every second of life she took away. Instead, she shoved another bar between the barrels, locking them in place as the overcharged motor strained and failed. It gave a quick pop as it exploded, shredding my left side with shrapnel. The great and powerful goddess is impressed with your resilience. It is a shame that you have to die here. We would have accepted you. We would have used you to help others in need. 
For once, she spoke in a somewhat normal tone of voice, which I was focused, or forced to focus on, desperately trying to stay conscious. Instead, you insist on interfering and fighting. We are curious as to what you have gained to defy us. I choked and caught a, a coughed up a hefty amount of blood, which I made sure to spit out to the monstrosity. Her flesh burned while she didn't even flinch, oblivious to the fact that my blood was dangerous. As the gears in my head felt like they were slowing down, they managed to give me one good answer as my gaze drifted to the door of the house. Longbo had her helmet off and was angrily firing her rifles at the, at the alicorn, the shots not making a dent on the spell. Lily pulled her out of the way of an incoming magical bolt as I looked back to the uh, goddess's emissary. I have... friends. I coughed out and smiled as darkness seeped in. I felt myself unable to hold my head up any longer. The pain of my body faded away with my cares, as I waited to be met with the warm sun and soft grass of the afterlife. Yeah! Take that, you big meanie! The voice of Pinky startled me awake as I got to my hooves, immediately shuddering and letting out a scream as the pain from my open wounds shot through my body. I raved and flailed for what felt like an hour before the wounds numbed. My heart raced as my chest as I cried and attempted to hold uh, control my breathing. But at least it was all over. I had failed in my task to stop 42, or to save Futuria. But even so, I was finally done. Wow! You guys are clobbering them out there! 21 to 4 is a great score! Pinky shouted into my ear as I let out a groan. Sorry about the pain, though. The closer you are, uh, you come to sticking here permanently, the more you feel your pain from the other side. It sucks, but you're only supposed to go through once. I opened my eyes to see that it was nighttime, and that the moon was shining down brightly on the grassy hill, though. The Luna's silhouette was missing from it. I turned my head, looking over to where Pinky was talking from, amazed that I was now uh, looking at the largest television screen I'd ever seen. What was on it was even more unbelievable. It was a view of the fighting currently going on in Futuria. Well, not exactly. Current. There I was, just now running into the street like a moron to save Longbow and the others. The image froze as the rods hit me, Pinky turning to look at me with a face imitating pain. How did you manage to deal with that kind of pain? Sheesh, any normal pony would have just died from the shock. She changed her look from one to a smile, uh, patting the grass next to her. I didn't deal with it. I died. I strode forward, choosing instead to stand as we talked. What? No, you didn't. She hooked at the remote in front of her, unfreezing the image to show me to talk with the goddess. Just after I slumped over, Lily came from the doorway and used the base cannon on the goddess's shield. The odd reverberating magic it shot shattered it before she then used the shredder on her, turning the goddess into minced meat. Longbow and Suture darted out and dragged me inside, rebar spikes and all. How come every time you come here, you think the worst? How do you know I'm not dead? They just brought me inside. I mean, I could still die, right? I looked down at her as she beamed a bright smile up to me. Or, you know that I don't... Or you know that I don't because you already know everything to come. Correct the mundo! She shouted, flickering her hoof in the air. There was a click of a light switch before the night instantly became day. I was blinded by the sharp uh, change for a moment, shaking it off as she hoofed the controller and made it and the television disappear. Follow me. You need to learn something about this place. She bounced down the hill opposite the way we'd normally go leading me along the other hill, stopping halfway down to the side. She sat down and looked at her forehoof intently, tapping her other like she was impatiently waiting for something. I don't get it. I tried to speak, but stopped as she crammed her tiny forehoof into my mouth. Wait here, and whatever you do, do not move from this spot. Her eyes bulged out with each word for emphasis, waiting until I nodded to run off. I peeked over the hill and watched her climb up into the tree, disappearing as I shrugged and lay in the grass, taking the time to enjoy the warmth of the sun. My ears perked up as I heard the oddest thing. Oh, you can't see your mom yet. Only dead people can go into heaven. 
Her voice sounded exactly the same as when she told me that back when... I tried to get to my hooves, finding myself weighed down against the dirt and grass. And the more I struggled, the harder it got to move. And then the pain started again. Of course, it had to appear, going, going back to the real world. I bit down on my lip, trying not to scream out as I could feel the pain of my skin like it was flaying itself off me. After a moment, I couldn't stand it anymore, going to scream when Pinky appeared over me with a contrail behind her. We can't have you screaming. I'll send you back, but just know that even though time has no real meaning here, and the meetings are all mixed up, the next time for you that we meet like this will be the last time I can help you. She gave a soft smile as I cried and screamed into her hoof. Now, what was that hint I gave you? Ah, that's right! She pulled her hoof away and sucked in air to belt out another scream, but I found myself sent back before I could start, instantly falling into the painless transition back into real life. I don't care about the risks! Fucking do what it takes to save him! Waking up to Longbow's shouting twice in one night was something I had hoped to keep to a minimum in a normal relationship. But goddesses was it good to hear her voice. The sharp prick of a needle in my hoof sent my body on fire and gave me ext my extremities frostbite. The extreme patchwork of Hydra doing its job as I screamed out into a gag. Please, I'll try to stay calm. I'll give you some medics for a moment. Even though the incredible pain I felt, I could tell the suture sounded sad. Had the squad lost some pony? No, he can't have medics due to his mutation. Longbow on the other hoof sounded more relaxed, probably due to the fact that I was out of harm's way. Focusing on their voices was the only thing that was keeping me from trying to go find a pool to dunk myself in, while every fire by my being felt like it was melting away. What the buck? I know it's not nearly as good, but it might help suppress the pain, right? The quick pounding of hooves of a pony, leaving the room were in, and running down the hallway preceded a sigh from Suture. You know, with the dose he would need, he'll form a resilience to the drug before he even gets any better. Buck is a nasty addition to have. And as long as it takes the pain away, I'll do whatever I need to. We'll... Deal with it when it comes up. He just needs to be able to rest. And he can't if he's in that much pain, can he? Longbow, you are amazing. I would kiss you if everything didn't hurt when I moved. The quick hooves of somebody returned with a shaking bottle, presumably full of buck. I suppose you're right. Though your group has gone through the most of our medical supplies already, pain is not a pleasant thing to be in at the day's event. His words spoke of experience, one more horrifying that I could dare to imagine I want to live through. The gag was removed and I felt three tabs of the chalky drug shoved into my muzzle. I swallowed them hastily as I whined. The thundering of the anti-air cannon had ceased as the sporadic gunfire from outside drifted through the halls of the house back of the, of the house of tomorrow. At least there was still fighting going on. But I couldn't help but think that it would cost us in lives while I was out. As the buck tabs kicked in and the pain from the Hydra wore down, I felt a boiling sensation deep inside of me. A constant ebbing of pain that remained, even after I could force myself to relax. Are... are you alright? Longbow's voice was soft as she leaned in close. I opened my eye to look up at her, seeing a smile grow across her muzzle before she hugged me tightly. I whined as her armor squeezed the air from my lungs, gasping before she let me uh, back down softly. Sorry, I just love you. She smiled and winced as some of my blood turned or burned her neck or it pressed against me. I wanted to ask how we were doing when Doppler burst into the room, saluting to Maple, who I hadn't seen uh, was in here. Sir, you won't believe what I'm picking up. She hoofed at her radio controls on her foreleg. A burst of static on her external speaker came over. Navarro Tower, this is Raptor Lenticular. At coordinates 39.783 by 89.650. Responding to distress call of patrol route 159. 
Settlement 31 is taking collateral from an engagement below the cover. Scouts report earlier forces that may be a threat to the settlement. Please advise. There was a burst of static before the response came over. We are seeing their feed. Command Greenlight's action against all aerial targets and all ground-based anti-air defenses. Good hunting, Lentecular. Navarro Tower out. Well, I'll be damned. That field gun may have just saved our flanks. Though, without the others having been in this room, we had to warn them not to fire on them. I pushed myself up, grunting as the pain inside my chest flared, but the buck gave me more than enough strength to ignore it. Dashing past the rangers and heading for the front door, I almost made it when Skyline flew through it and slammed into me, the two of us dropping to the floor with a thud. Sky! No time! I need to warn the others! Stay inside! I scrambled to my hooves as she shook the dizziness off. I turned towards the door to run out when I saw one of the most confusing things I've seen in my life. The armored pro of an enormous boat pressed through the cloud cover, diving under it and leveling out as it ran through several of the very surprised alicorns. The bristling gun turrets spun on their mantles, taking aim and letting forth bright beams of red death through the air. I couldn't help but smile at the amazing sight, sure that there was never a time when I thought I would have been glad to see those bug-eyed assholes butt into my life again. One of the beams fired down at us, barely missing the house. Instinctively, I turned to see what it had fired at, looking just in time to see the anti-air cannon melt into a heap of glowing slag. Yeah, that's right. I don't care who you fuckers are. I'll take y'all on. Our Merc let out a hearty laugh as he went back to spraying down the air. Even though, um, even though more than a few gashes burns and half his face was bloodied, he was still chugging away, murdering alicorns faster than I would have thought possible. I bolted out to him, tackling him to the ground, before a bright beam of death turned the dirt we was standing into a small glass bowl. What the fuck did you do that for? He pushed me off of him with his ammo can, as his ammo can spilled out, one of them spreading multicolor star metal tipped rounds into the dirt. Just the few I, that I could see as I got up was already about the same amount that I ever sold to any pony, or seen sold at all. I grumbled and untangled myself from him, spinning to meet somebody else who could walk from the house. I looked up to the sky, smiling as purple flashes dotted it when the alicorns who could teleport left. The goddess knew it was a losing fight from here on out, and was determined to save as many of them of herself as she could. Our new friend went wide-eyed and buried himself under rubble as quickly as he could. I didn't have time for this. No! Get inside! Now! I screamed and burst out into the street, doing my best to serpentine to the front door again. I could feel the heat from a few of the goddess's parting shots, as well as more than a few of the enclave shots that drifted too close. I had thought that they would stick to what their command had said, but I guess they brought the big guns out, and they might as well use them. I had almost made it to the door, just crossing the dirt where the lawn had been so many years ago, before I was hit hard in the side. I rolled and tumbled in the dirt, shredding my aching legs to stabilize myself as I groaned. My ribs felt like they had just been hit by some pony swinging a couch at me. Don't ask how I know what that feels like. It's not a fun story. But none of them felt broken. When I looked up to see what hit me, I was surprised that I hadn't been killed instead. By charter of the Grand Pegasus Enclave, you were ordered to surrender yourself into custody. Sergeant Granite stood before me, putting a hoof to me as her charged energy weapons were trained on me. There was a soft click from the speaker in her helmet. I'm just going to say this now. But having a s uh, that small of a click to turn on your speaker to maximum makes you just a bit of an asshole in my book. Settlement dwellers, the fighting is over. Lay down your weapons and gather in the central building for detonation and questioning. You know what they say. Carlotta coughed out and stepped up beside me as I got to my hooves. Cuts, bruises, burns, you name it. She had taken quite the beating during the fight and the twisted husks of smoldering metal strapped to her sides bore no resemblance of the rifles they had once been, let alone looking at, like firearms at all anymore. 
I looked up as the familiar shapes of the Enclave Vertibux and Sky Tanks descended in the mostly intact light, uh, lighting from the House of Tomorrow. Out of the frying pan. I watched as the Vertibuck that landed in the street before me powered down, the side hatch opening as the smiling muzzle of a sharply dressed mare dropped as she saw me. Silver Star looked good for having been held captive last time I saw her, but the one thing that I could see that was out of place on her was that instead of the medal of a major, she now held the rank of lieutenant. And into the fire, I finished the phrase, sighing, as today just wasn't going to go my way.